Hello everyone. So guys, uh, this video I'm preparing uh, to cover a very important point uh, when it comes to uh, your gate preparation, right? Specifically for gate aerospace. That how should we utilize previous year questions and uh, are they really required when we are preparing a topic or uh, practicing these questions will help you in the coming exam because people feel that there is no repetition in the gate questions. So I will try to address these things because this is very, very powerful uh, thing uh, when it comes to your gate preparation. And this will help specifically the people who are doing on their own. All right. So if you people are not uh, taking help of any institute or any person, you don't have any mentor, then specifically you need these kind of small, small points in which you can align your uh, gate preparation. So I will... Uh, you people already know me, so I will not go into my uh, introduction, detailed introduction, but just a brief that I am Prateek and I'll be, I'm actually a mentor and head faculty for Gate Aerospace at Goodwill Gate 2 IIT. I am also currently working in Jaguar Land Rover UK and uh, I am a structural engineer uh, here. And uh, in parallel, because of uh, my passion in aerospace industry, I have done my master's in uh, IIT, from IIT Kharagpur. And I've worked in various MNCs as well as I as I've shown uh, here. So I'll be talking more about uh, Gate Aerospace now. So I have kept one slide just to give you an idea what previous year question means. So you know Gate Aerospace started from 2007 and 2025 has already happened and you people are preparing for 2026. So if I count the number of questions, right, the total Gate Aerospace questions what you have with you is 1270. Now the number looks slightly different because 2007, the pattern was with 85 questions. 2008 was 85 questions. 2009 was 60 questions. And there were no aptitude in these papers. And then from 2010 onwards till 2025, you have 65 question pattern, which is fixed now for all the streams. So if you sum all these, right, you have total previous year questions of 1270. Now, guys, just imagine if you people can solve all these questions, right, from 2007 till 2025, you are talking about solving around 1200 questions. This itself is huge and not only limited to aerospace question papers. If you people go inside XC, right, engineering sciences, here you will find very, very good questions on maths, structures, which is basically strength of material here, and fluid mechanics and thermodynamics. So you need not to solve a complete fluid mechanics because in aerospace, we have very limited uh, syllabus for fluid and similarly very limited for thermodynamics, but you will find maths is absolute brilliant in XC. Strength of materials is absolute brilliant, very high standard compared to aerospace. And same thing you can check into ME also. So if I combine all this right, guys, we are talking about somewhere around 2000 previous year gate questions, which will help you to understand or cover your gate aerospace topic. Now, I hope you people get an idea now. If you're solving 2000 questions, right, I am 100%, I'm more than 100% sure that you are not going to left out with any topic in your preparation because up till now everything is touched upon in your gate syllabus but the question is when we are solving these 2000 questions how we are going to arrange it how i came to know that this is a good way this is a bad way am i doing the right thing because if someone is helping you it's really good if not then you should know whether you are going in the right direction or not right so for that i have put few points if you people i will follow in my batch for sure, 100% all these points. But if you follow something else, but try to get the idea what I'm saying here. So when you're solving your gate questions, right? Solve your gate questions topic wise. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you people are doing vibrations or you people are doing jet propulsion or you people are doing uh, finite wing theory in aerodynamics, any topic. Once you finish a topic, the first thing you should do is please start solving your gate questions from 2007 till 2025. The reason of solving the gate questions topic wise, not year wise is 
once you are done with the topic, you have written all the formulas in your notes. You have practiced some problems. Maybe someone has given you a lecture or any means you have completed a topic. Gate questions topic wise will tell you whether this topic is completed or not. So if you are able to solve majority of the questions, there are some doubts here and there. That means we are on the right track. And this will also give you an idea. Have we left something in a particular topic? If so, what you need to do is you that's what you need to analyze. And if you feel you are weak in a topic, then please read that particular topic only from book. So again, let me give you an example. Let's say you are doing Excel flow compressors. You are very comfortable with velocity triangles. You are very comfortable with isentropic efficiencies or different topics. But you feel you are lagging in enthalpy entropy diagrams. You're not able to calculate enthalpy properly. You are confused in units. So look for that topic only in books. Don't waste your time in reading all the chapter again for Excel flow compressor because gate numericals already gave you some confidence, right? And if you are very comfortable, then move on to the next topic. Now, before moving on to next topic and take this very seriously, please prepare your own solutions, guys, in a notebook. Maybe you people are following some certain videos, certain lectures, certain classes, or maybe you have some handwritten notes from your senior or your friend, anyone. But make sure you're writing your gate solutions yourself. The reason being, it will help you really, really well when you enter into the last two months of your revision thing, right? Like in Jan and mostly in December, 15, 20 days when you're solving full mock exams, these gate medicals will help you a lot. I already mentioned this, read about the topics you are weak in, only the topics. Gate questions will tell you the strength and the weakness. Once you are reading the book, right? You will never know which concept you can apply and which concept you cannot apply when a question comes. So you don't know where you're standing in your preparation. Only gate questions can tell you that. Test series will not do that. The reason being sometimes test series can be too difficult for gate standard and sometimes it can be too easy. So it can give you a wrong impression. Gate questions are exactly the standard you are preparing for, right? So it will give you an exact answer where you are standing. What should I read? Am I lagging in calculations? Am my speed is very low or I'm not able to remember the formulas or I have not studied this topic. All these things will be answered very properly when you start solving gate numericals. Once everything is sorted, then you move on to a next topic. All right. Now, once your topic is completed, let's say you have finished Excel flow compressor. Now you are moving towards Excel flow turbine that is completed. You are moving towards centrifugal flow compressor. This is my request to all of you. Make sure you give at least 10 minutes revision to the topics you have completed. I know it looks cumbersome, but believe me, guys, you don't want to have a gap of more than 15, 20 days from a topic because if you give a gap of one or two months, right? And when you come back again to the topic, you need to start from scratch again. I know you will understand the concept, but formulas will be gone. So it's best if you can revise it five or 10 minutes on a daily basis of all the topics, at least just go through it. You have already written your notes, right? Just go through it. Now I'll give you few more important points for that. I've taken one ex few examples. Let's say this is the question I've taken from 2010 gate aerospace. This was question number three. You understand why you will understand why I'm taking this as an example. So question says, I'm not entering into technical things. An aircraft is climbing at a constant speed in a straight line at a steep angle of climb. So basically you have an aircraft, which is climbing, correct? It's going up. They're asking what is the load factor? Now, please listen to me carefully. This is, this is what makes you hundred percent prepared for your gate exam. When a question like this comes in your gate exam or when you're preparing, Typically answer for this is positive less than one. It's okay. Whether you know the answer or not, I'm not going into technical terms. My point is when you have studied load factor for climbing, you yourself should ask, do I know what is load factor for steady state and level flight? Do I know what is load factor for gliding? Do I know what is load factor for turning flight? 
do I know what is load factor for pull up maneuver, pull down maneuver? Do I know load factor for a vertical flight? For a free fall? For a aircraft standing in hangar? If you can answer all these questions in your mind, just seeing this question, that's what an actual preparation is. So answering or learning one question will not help you to give answers in 2026. The heading of this lecture is how to utilize previous year questions, right? And this is the point I was making. So when you see any gate numerical, try to see whether you have covered that topic completely. So this question is asking load factor for climbing flight. Do I know load factor for all the other flight conditions? Because that's what will happen in the coming exams, right? They will ask different flight designs for load factors. So in this way, you will understand whether I have covered all the topics or not. I, I have taken three, four examples. Just be with me. It will take hardly two, three minutes. Exactly similar example from aerodynamics. 2025, question number 18. Now here they are asking, for a NACA airfoil this, what is the location of maximum camber? Again, I'm not going into details, but when this question comes, when you are practicing aerodynamics, right? You should know what all these four numbers of NACA airfoils represent. They are asking maximum camber. It's okay. But what first number, second number, last two digits, thick maximum thickness, camber location. I'm not going into that. But understand what all four uh, digits represents. And do we have only four digits? What about five digit series? You have NACA six digit series also. So when a question like this comes, when you're practicing, don't restrict yourself only answering this question. I know this, I'll move ahead. When you know this, it's okay. Ask yourself whether you know the five digit series and six digit series. In simple words, whether you know everything about NACA airfoils, then only you mark that topic that it is done. And this is the best way to utilize any of your previous year gate questions. I'll give you two more examples. This is also asked in 2025, question number 23. Which one of the following has a destabilizing effect on static roll stability? So destabilizing means bad for roll stability. So dihedral angle, high wing, low wing, swept back wing, and you have multiple options. Now, again, when you are answering this question, ask yourself, let's say you have, act, ideally speaking, the answer for this is option B. High wing is really bad uh, for roll stability. But you should know what dihedral or high wing or low wing or swept back wing can do to directional stability. Do you know this answer or what happens to longitudinal stability? If you can answer these questions, you're not only marking option for this, but you are prepared thoroughly for the topic. So you know exactly not only role, these components, what it can do to other uh, stability also. And that's what they're going to do in your exams, right? They will going to ask different, slightly different questions here and there. Last question. 24, question number 18. Now, if you see, there are different processes and they have given you the options. Ideally speaking, this option is option C. So AA is isothermal. That means temperature remains constant. BB is isentropic. That means entropy remains constant. Then you have CC, which is isobaric, which is constant pressure line. And then you have constant volume line. Now, I'm not going into technical terms, but when you mark this option, if you know this, do you know everything about isothermal, isentropic, isobaric, isochoric processes? Not only the graphs. Do you remember how the process can be written as? Can I write isothermal as PV equals to constant? Do you know this equation? Can you write isentropic as PV to the power gamma equals to constant? And so on. Constant pressure is nothing but P equals to constant. Constant volume is V equals to constant. Do you know everything about these processes? The intention of solving numericals gate questions is not to give get the answer. You all have answer keys present throughout the internet, right? You can get the YouTube videos, you can get it 
in the PDFs form, everyone can provide you the solutions. The best way of preparing it is whether you know that topic throughout or not. Are you aware about these four processes or should I read more about these processes, make my notes and then I will say my uh, topic is completed. So this is my way. I typically try to follow kind of similar concepts in my lectures, in my videos, in my live classes. Just remember one thing. It all depends upon how consistently you will going to prepare. It should not be that you pe people just study for 10 hours a day, do it for two, three days, and then you are gone. Nothing will, um, will be, you will not get anything good in 2026 in that case. So just be consistent. If you're giving two hours, it's okay. Start with two hours, but be consistent. Try to bring more number of hours, maybe on weekends or maybe on, uh, on some other day when you have a leave. If you people are working, it's okay. If you're third year, it's okay. If you're fourth year, it's okay. Everyone need to be very consistent when it comes to your gate preparation. All right. Hopefully this will give you an insight about how to utilize your previous year gate questions. You people know how to connect with me. I'm always available on this number. You can WhatsApp me directly. Uh, WhatsApp is when I can reply very easily. And um, you can put your doubt if you need any help, if you need any reference for books, anything. You can always connect with me. All right. And uh, I'll be posting more videos. So it will be good if you people can like the content, you can subscribe to the channel, you will be automatically notified. This is completely for aerospace. So we will not be posting anything apart from which will be helpful for you uh, in your gate aerospace preparation. All right. So thank you so much, guys. I'll see you uh, in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.